talk about um, independent and dependent um, events with probability. Okay, when something is independent, that means it doesn't rely on the other thing that's happening. So if you have the probability of, of event A and the probability of event B, and they're independent from each other, then one doesn't rely on the other. But if you have the probability of event A and the probability of event B, um, and B changes because of what happens with A, that's dependent upon each other. So when they're independent, you have the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. So you're multiplying them together when they're, in, when they're independent from each other. And the key word in, these, in this sentence is and. Okay, you're going to see and in a lot of these. So we get a problem, and I wrote like highlights of the problem up here, and then we're going to solve it and set it up. We get a problem that says, for a fundraiser, a class sells 150 raffle tickets for a mall gift certificate and 200 raffle tickets for a booklet of a movie pass. You buy five raffle tickets for each prize. What's the probability you win both prizes? So there's 150 tickets for gift cards, 200 tickets for movies, and you buy five of each. What's the probability of both event A and event B happening? Of you winning event A and winning event B? Five over 150. Um, you said five over 150? Yeah. Yeah, five over 150 for event A. Five and 5 over 200. 5 over 150 reduces down to 1 over 30. Yes? Yeah. And 5 over 200 reduces down to 1 over 40. 40. So what is 1 30th times 1 40th? Yep, 1 over 1,200. So you have a 1 in 1,200 chance of winning both raffles. Does that make sense? Okay. okay, then, like I said, I just put like pieces of everything. <laughs> then we get to a race, okay? There's a motocross race, a BMX race. And each, um, in a BMX meet, um, each heat consists of eight competitors who are randomly assigned lanes one to eight. What's the probability that a racer will draw lane eight in the three heats in which the racer participates? So, the racer is participating in heat one, event A, event B, and event C. Heat one, heat two, and heat three. What's the probability that they will get lane eight for each heat? So you just do one eight for each one. You do one eight for each one, and then you multiply those together. Good. One eight times one eight times one eight gives me one over, what's eight cubed? What? <coughs> Five. 512. <laughs> so you have a 1 in 512 chance of getting the same lane three races in a row. Okay? Then we come to, um, this talks about CD players. It's old. So you know. No While you are riding to school, your portable CD player randomly plays four different songs. Okay, it plays four. Me too. It plays four. Mine uh, came with it because mine has Bluetooth CD player and everything. Okay. While you are riding to school, your portable CD player randomly plays four different songs from a CD with 16 songs on it. What is the probability that you will hear your favorite song on the CD at least once during the week, which is five days? Wait, there's four favorite songs. Four favorite, you, yes, four, uh, four songs, no, not four favorite songs, you have one favorite song. Four songs play each day. Oh, okay. It's a very short ride to yeah. school. Oh, okay. Okay. So I so, you have four different songs that play each day, you have 16 song selection, and you want one on the five days of the week. You want one at least, one of those songs to play at least once of the five days a week. How can you figure that out? P? 
Oh, <laughs> probability, is that what you're doing? Okay, so you're saying the probability of what? <laughs> How about, what do we want to do? We want to hear one song, yes? Yeah. Yeah. So how about the probability of hearing my song equals what? Four over uh -uh. Stop. Four. You need to think about all the lessons we talked about. One. One oh, minus what? The probability of not hearing it. Not hearing it. So what we need to figure out is what this is here, yes? Yeah, so, um, you didn't understand. We had to nope. We understood. <laughs> Why don't you think to other lessons we've used? Let's think about this. If I have one, okay, not four, 16, yes. C4. 16C4 would go on the bottom of this fraction that we're going to create <laughs> because I have 16 songs and I'm playing four each day. That's how many combinations I can play each day, yes? Okay. Or in one day. How many combinations I can play in one day. What do I want specifically? One, your no, favorite song. Because remember, this is my hearing, this is my not, not hearing. Old. So 15. So 15. C. Four. Now, here's the deal. There's one other thing I have to do to this. This represents just one day. How many days are there in the week? So I raise it to that power. Instead of doing this times that times that times that times that, you know, five times, I can just raise it to the fifth power. It makes it easier. Okay? So now I have one minus, what's 15C4? I suggest doing each of these things individually so that your calculator reads order of operations correct. 1365. What is 16C4? Eighteen twenty. Divide thirteen sixty-five <laughs> and eighteen twenty and you get what? 0.75. Raise 0.75 to the fifth. And you get one minus uh, 0 0.237. I'm going to round it <coughs> there. So if I do one minus 0 0.237, I get basically a 76.3% chance of hearing my song at least once that week. Pretty high chance of hearing your song that week. Wait, wait, wait. Why can you do 16 on the bottom? Because there's 16 songs left. Yes, because there's 16. Because on top, you don't because you don't want one of those. Because you never really want to hear one, so you're not hearing. Yes. So it's what you're not hearing. Yes. It's what you're not hearing combinations over what you could hear combinations. Okay. So that is how we um, go ahead and plug in a bunch of stuff. Um, and incorporate three or four lessons into one in that type of example. Now, probability of dependent events. Dependent. When events are dependent, okay, that would be like this. If it's stormy outside, you can't play a soccer game. A soccer game dependent is dependent on the weather. However, you can play a basketball game when it's stormy outside because it doesn't matter what the weather is, it's indoors. Okay? So when things are dependent, they change because of the thing that happened prior to it. It relies on it. So the probability, probability of A and B happening when it is a dependent event is taking the probability of A of the first thing and you multiply it by the probability of B given A. What is the new probability of B given that A already happened? Okay, so I wrote this table up here, and um, this table represents what we're going to work with for our next problem. Okay, so it says, the big word problem, and that's the chart that goes with it. The table shows the number of tropical cyclones that, that formed during the hurricane season from 1988 to 2004. So these are all cyclones, these three types are all tropical cyclones, okay? It says use the table to estimate A, 
the probability that a cyclone is a hurricane. Okay, so let's start there. The probability that a future tropical cyclone is a hurricane. How can I estimate that the, type, that the tropical cyclone is a hurricane? So for A, I want to figure out the probability of it being a hurricane, yes? How do I set that up with the information they give me? <laughs> probability that a cyclone is a hurricane. Okay, good. What do you? She said you add 545 and 215 because that would give me the total hurricanes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so good. 545. No. Yes, 545 and 215 gives me 760. And then Maddie says we need to add all of the data. Oh, okay. I was working the other way. So you get 1575. So the probability of it being a hurricane is 760 over 1575. So 760 divided by 1575 would give me a point four. A, a 48.3% chance of that hurricane happening, of a hurricane happening. Does that make sense? When a cyclone hits, you have a 48.3% chance of a hurricane happening. Okay. Part B. Part B says, okay, and I wrote it really weird down here, but Part B says, the probability that a future tropical cyclone in the northern hemisphere is a hurricane. So what's the probability that in the future in the north, it's going to be a hurricane. What would you do? Good. What? 545 out of all of what numbers? Only on this, right? Only on that portion. So 199 plus 545 plus 398 gives me 1142, which would give me a probability of? 47. 47.7%. So it gives me, so basically, the probability of a cyclone turning into a hurricane is a 48.3% chance across the north and south hemispheres. But when you're in the north, the probability of a cyclone turning into a hurricane is a 47.7% okay, um, opportunity which probably is going to be much greater than the south. Because if we did the south, it would be 215 over 4, what? Over 433. When you do 215 over 433, you get a, almost a 50% chance. Okay? So that's what we're looking at there. Now, last problem, and then we'll move on. Okay. I wrote little keys up here again, too. You randomly select two cards from a standard deck of 52 cards, two of 52. The first is not a heart, the second would be a heart. So you select first, not a heart, second, a heart. If you replace the cards, what's the probability of doing A and B? Where does it mean replace the cards? Like if I draw a card out, I put it back in after I figure out what it is. So if I replace the cards, what's what's the option for first not pulling a heart out? Uh, 39 out of 52. Yep, 39 out of 52. And what is the probability of the next card being a heart when you replace the card? 13 out of 52. 13 out of 52. <coughs> These reduce down to 1 fourth and 3 four, uh, three fourths, right? Which gives me 3 over 16. 13 minus. No, you're two minus thirteen. Yeah. Yep. So three divided by sixteen gives me a rate a percentage of approximately eighteen point eight percent. So 
you have an 18.8% .8 chance of when you replace a card of pulling not a heart, then a heart. Now, if I don't replace the card, what is the probability of A and B? So, I mean, it's, the, it's still 39 out of 52. Yep, the first one is still 39 out of 52. And then the second one being a heart would be less because you're missing the card. Yeah. So, so 12 out of 50. No, do it the opposite way. 13 out of 52. 13 out of 51. Yeah. Because I didn't draw a heart the first time, right? So I still have 13 hearts in there. But now I only have 51 total cards. So if I do that ratio, 39 times 13 and 52 times 51 and divide them out, I have 507 divided by 2652, which is approximately 19.1%. So you have a higher chance of pulling a card out that's not a heart and then a heart when you don't replace them. Okay. These are the things you're doing on your homework tonight. So, homework is on the board. It is page 721, 3 through 31 odd.